Hello everyone. In this video, you will be learning about dry M terrain. And first of all, we will discuss its introduction. Then we will move towards general properties, mechanism of action, SAR, therapeutic uses, brand names. And lastly, I will give you some references through which I prepared this topic for you. So first of all, let's talk about dry M, uh, M terrain in journal. So this drug uh, comes with the brand uh, name of Dyrenium, and it is actually potassium sparing diuretic, often used in combination with thiazide diuretics for the treatment of high blood pressure or swelling. You know, when there's certain kind of swelling in which there is fluid accumulation, in that you can use this because that will uh, these drugs will lead towards removal of that fluid accumulation and will uh, solve that problem. So the combination with hydrochlorothiazide is known as hydrochlorothiazide slash triamethylene. So this combination is in a class of medication called diuretics or water pills and causes the kidneys to get rid of the body's unneeded water and sodium through the urine. So it is actually getting rid of all the water which is being accumulated in the body that is not necessary for your body. So there are different conditions where you need this action. So what is the therapeutic class of this drug? It is actually antihypertensive agent and pharmacological class of this agent is potassium sparing diuretic. That these agent, this agent will be uh, retaining potassium in the body and thereby excreting, uh, excreting out uh, sodium as well as water from the body. And chemical class is pteridine uh, derivative. So general properties. So first of all, we, uh, if we talk about the name, it is 6-phenyltriridine-247 triamine. And chemical formula for this drug is C12H11N7. And melting, melting point of this agent is 316 Celsius. Solubility is very slightly soluble in water and soluble in formic acid. Molecular weight of this drug is 253.26 gram per mole. It is odorless and jelly powder crystalline solid. Now, if we talk about mechanism of action of this drug, this drug is tyridine derivative with potassium sparing diuretic property that we have discussed previously. So how this drug actually works in our body? When you take this drug, it actually uh, goes to different part of nephron. Uh, for example, late distal tubule, cortical collecting tubule, or collecting duct in the kidney. And there, it will actually block sodium channels in the luminal membrane of principal cells. So in the diagram over here, you can see principal cells are being shown. So on the luminal side, that is this side over here, it is written that this side is luminal side. So on this side, there is a sodium channel. You can see over here, this is the sodium channel and sodium is going inward into the principal cell by this channel. So this drug will actually inhibit this channel. This is actually sodium channel inhibitor. Okay. This reversible inhibition of the electrogenic sodium transport decreases the luminal negative trans epithelial potential difference, thus reducing the diving force for potassium movement into the tubular lumen resulting in the inhibition of sodium reabsorption in exchange for potassium and hydrogen. Now, before I talk about all of this, you need to concentrate on the diagram. Okay, 
we have discussed that this channel will be blocked. Now, what actually happened normally that this sodium, when comes inside the cell, it will create a potential difference. Because of which, potassium in the cell will move out of the cell to balance that potential difference. As we know, there is certain ions present inside as well as outside the cell. And there is certain potential difference because of those ions. But when some ions move uh, across the membrane, there is disturbance of that potential. And now to uh, balance that difference, some ions have to move back to balance that difference. So in this diagram over here in the principal cell, when sodium is moving into the cell, it is creating potential difference. It is disturbing the normal uh, potential difference because uh, positive ions are moving into the cell. So it is creating more negative outside the, uh, outside the membrane in the lumen. In the luminal side, there will be more negative as compared to uh, before it moved into the cell. So now to balance this thing, potassium moves out uh, of the principal cell and it cancel out that difference. But what actually happen if you are going to block this sodium channel, there will be no more potassium going out of the cell because sodium coming sodium was giving the trigger for the potassium to go out. But now there is no more sodium coming into the principal cell. So there will be no more potassium going out of the cell. So what will happen? There will be no more driving force for the potassium movement into the uh, luminar, um, tubular luminar. So so uh, resulting in the inhibition of sodium reabsorption. So obviously sodium will uh, remain in the lumen and it will be, it will not be reabsorbed into the uh, back into the cell and thus it will be excreting out. So now over here it says in exchange for potassium and hydrogen ion. We have discussed about potassium, but why he is mentioning uh, hydrogen ion? This is because when sodium ions move into the cell normally, what actually happens? We have discussed in our several videos that whenever sodium come into the cell, it is actually depolarizing it. So it is causing depolarization of the cell. So this depolarization has a triggering effect for this channel over here in the type A intercalated cell. On the luminal side of type A intercalated cell, there is presence of ATPS pump, which is responsible for uh, removal of hydrogen ion from the cell into the lumen. So now if we have blocked this sodium channel, there is no more depolarization and that depolarization is required for ATPS pump to be functioning. But now as we don't have this sodium working over here, coming over here to cause depolarization, we don't have this ATPS pump working. So what will happen that this sodium reabsorption is inhibited in exchange of potassium and hydrogen. So potassium and hydrogen are staying in the cell and are not coming out of the cell towards the lumen because of the effect of sodium not coming into the cell. So this is how it works. To summarize it, I will um, explain it again. First of all, we need to understand when sodium comes into the cell, into the principal cell, two things happen. First of all, there is potential difference. 
being created um, across the membrane. This potential difference does two things. First of all, there is depolarization. De this depolarization is important for the working of ATPs, uh, hydrogen ATPs pump. Secondly, this depolarization is this potential difference or depolarization is also triggering a uh, factor for potassium channel. And potassium will move out of the cell after sodium comes in. And similarly, hydrogen ion will go out of the cell when sodium comes in. But when you are blocking the sodium channel, ultimately there will be no more uh, potassium and hydrogen going out of the cell. So in this way, you are retaining uh, potassium in the cell. That's why these drugs are called as potassium sparing diuretics. Now moving towards structure activity relationship. Over here, you can see there is a pyridine a ring which contains pyrimidine and pyrazine fused to, uh, together okay so these two rings are fused together and together they are called as pyridine ring and along uh, with them there is attached phenyl ring and three amino groups are also being attached at C2, C4, and C7 position, as you can see, okay? When phenyl group is replaced by non-aromatic residues analog with, diff uh, with different activities are formed. When this thing, this ring over here, the third ring, when you replace this ring with something else, there will be different activity of this agent. If you replace this phenyl group with six alkyl analog, those diuretics are active. If that uh, analog is six and butyl uh, analog that has good activity. But if you replace it with six isopropyl and six cyclohexanyl, they will have only modest activity. If you replace it with benzyl analog they are active and benzyl analog and six alkyl analog suggest that phenyl group at six position position does not enhance diuretic activity because of electronic interaction with pyridine ring because of electronic interaction with pyridine ring uh, we know that phenyl group is not responsible for enhancing the di diuretic activity. So now if we talk about the therapeutic uses of this drug. This drug is used for treatment of edema as I have mentioned previously that in swelling there is uh, in certain kind of uh, swelling where there is fluid accumulation. That is called as edema. So in edema, uh, which is associated with uh, congestive heart failure or cirrhosis of liver, um, nephrotic syndrome. In those kind of conditions, you can use this. Uh, also in steroid-induced edema, idiopathic edema, which has no known cause, and edema due to secondary hyperaldosteronism, in which there is hyperactivity of aldosterone. In that condition, there there is presence of edema so in that uh, you can also uh, use this agent this agent is also used with another agent that is called as hydrochlorothiazide and that combined uh, can be used for the management of hypertension now we have different formulations available for this drug. First of all, triamptyrene itself uh, has a brand name called as Dyrenium, which is uh, manufactured by Bell Spring, and it is uh, in capsules 
and they comes in two strengths that is 50 uh, milligram or 100 milligram and now if we talk about the second uh, formulation that we have over here that is triamphetamine and hydrochlorothiazide so now these two are combined together for the treatment of hypertension so now the first agent is uh, potassium sparing diuretic the second one is thiazide diuretic now both of these combined um, make a formulation and that is called as triamterizide it is prepared by gsk and it comes with the name brand name of uh, diazide it it is also uh, it also comes in capsule formulation 37.5 milligram of triamphetamine and uh, 25 milligram of hydrochlorothiazide uh, is present in this formulation. These are the references by which this um, topic has been prepared. I hope you like it. If you do, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.